Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francois Calois. I am a data scientist at Databricks. And as one of the top users of the product uh, within the company, um, I'd like to share with you my experience with how I feel it, ha it has empowered me uh, to do more with data, and it can be empowering you uh, to do the same. Uh, at first, I'd like to give a brief intro to explain my personal motivation to use Databricks then explain how Databricks uh, can be used to help you manage the entire data lifecycle. And then we will uh, uh, explore that with a demo. And to begin with, um, and to motivate the rest of the presentation, um, let me talk a little bit about, about my experience with uh, data tools. I started my data scientist journey using the Jupyter to do data exploration and uh, machine learning. But uh, quickly, as I joined uh, my first company, I realized that more tools were needed to productionalize the results, uh, share it, for example, using Power BI to do more advanced data analytics and share it, sharing it with the stakeholders. But also to build and refresh my own data sets, uh, I needed to use uh, more tools. Um, in SQL, I could use database and data factory, but with Python, I would need to use a VM, uh, Spider, and Windows Scheduler. And uh, finally, for model serving and delivery, again, uh, I used Azure ML and Power Apps. And uh, as you can see, it paints the picture of uh, for each application uh, using a, a different tool. Uh, it it makes it difficult. It's like it take it can take several days to learn uh, the usage of uh, of a new technology. Um, then more days to debug um, to debug it. And uh, once you've implemented your pipeline, you need to monitor it very closely and uh, be aware that one failure with one uh, tool can fail the entire pipeline. Uh, so as you can see, this is hard to scale. And that's really uh, what changed completely when I started using Databricks because now I use one single tool to do all those applications. Uh, and that really empowers you uh, because you spend so much so, le so less time uh, focusing on you know learning new tools. You can focus a lot more on the business applications and also on expanding the the things that you can do. Because you can think maybe in the past, uh, you're a data scientist. You used to work with a one gigabyte data set in Jupyter, um, and then at the time of productionalization on one terabyte, you may want to um, to have a data engineer. Uh, take care of that, and uh, that could take uh, some time to plan, to prioritize, and potentially there could be weeks to months uh, before productionalization of your results. With Databricks, you can do that within a couple of hours uh, and have full control over, uh, over the result and uh, over the productionalization of it, and it really expands your capabilities as a data person. Now to explain which part of the data life, life cycle data risk covers, um, I have this, uh, I'll, I'll start explaining the data life cycle. First, data is created by the interaction between users and software. And typically you have a software engineer who coded the logging of some of the user interactions uh, into uh, and saving that into raw logs, which we call what we call at Databricks the bronze data set. Uh, and you may have uh, hundreds of locations with raw logs uh, from multiple software engineers, maybe in different formats. So you need a data engineer to come, collect all uh, those logs from different locations, uh, process them, uh, potentially clean to deduplicate, uh, do some PII removal, and aggregate everything in one centralized location where ev everyone can access it, which we call the silver data set. At that level, our data is centralized, but it is not yet useful for the business uh, as a log. So uh, you need to do a little bit more, typically aggregates and joins to transform it into business data, such as metrics and uh, features. Uh, and maybe in the past, you would need a data engineer to take care of that process. But I believe with Databricks, any data person can do that process, them, process themselves, and I will show that in a demo. Once you have business data, you can do analytics 
which can be useful then to take uh, uh, to for decision making and uh, modeling uh, by data scientists, which uh, can be uh, uh, used to create recommender uh, recommender systems, and eventually the the final goal is to improve the UX of um, of your uh, your uh, software and eventually improve the success of your business. So where those data bricks lie uh, in that process, we have Spark uh, Delta to uh, process data and uh, and save it um, in a reliable reliable manner. We have SQL Analytics which uh, enables the data analyst to share uh, visualization to the company. We have Spark ML, MLflow to do machine learning and productionalize uh, the models. And um, with all that, you can use it in notebooks uh, for interactive usage and jobs to schedule uh, your processes uh, at uh, reg regular periods. And that paints a, pitch, a picture which we call the lake house, which is that Databricks offers a unified platform that enables you to manage your entire data lifecycle. And not only it enables you to do that as a company uh, to make data people uh, work together more efficiently, but it also um, enables one user to blur the line of uh, the, all those data personas and be able to manage the entire data lifecycle for your project. And that's what I want to uh, demonstrate next with uh, the demo. So uh, I'll start with a data set from Kaggle. That's uh, an e-commerce data set. Uh, in it, you have user actions that are view, cart, and purchase. So th those are your role logs. And now I will have 18 minutes to uh, show you that you can be a data engineer, a data analyst, and a data scientist um, in one project. And all the, the code is available in uh, GitHub. Uh, so I will start with the data engineer. And uh, let's assume that our data engineer um, starts with uh, e-commerce events data. Um, and the software engineer has coded a process to log those events every few seconds as CSV files. CSV files that will be um, appended to a cloud bucket, what we call raw logs. And the work of our data engineer is going to take that, those raw logs to join them uh, with a dimension table uh, that provides the ID to name mapping and save it as a delta format in what we call clean event logs. So let's start the demo. Here I am in a Databricks notebook called Prepare Data, which you can uh, run if you want uh, to reproduce what I'm doing. I want to show here that uh, the technology that I used, which is repos, to um, gather all the notebooks that will be used through that uh, demo, and that you can use to sync all the results to uh, GitHub. Very convenient. So when you've run that notebook, what you get is two tables. The first one is this uh, uh, row events table, where um, you can see here one event, which is a purchase, uh, product ID, category ID. Please note that we do not have a category name here. And that's because we have a second table that provides the mapping between the category ID and the category name. And the job of our data engineer will be to uh, produce the final uh, table, which contains all the information. For that, our data engineer is going to use a uh, database technology called the autoloader, which uh, I'm going to illustrate in that demo. So I'm running the notebook here. First part, define the schema, the expected schema of the input data. Uh, here, load the dimension table, e-commerce demo dot categories. And here's how the order loader is uh, generated. A Spark read stream format cloud files. And we are going to read CSV file with the schema defined uh, two cells above and with the path uh, which is um, uh, provided here. Uh, and uh, when we run that, uh, so the, the next step is going to be to join with the dimension table and to write as a delta file called e-commerce demo .event stream. And as you can see, uh, now we are running, uh, running that. We do not have any events uh, recorded here 
uh, because our software engineer hasn't yet uh, created the uh, created the, the logging. We're going to start this process here. So um, I simulated that process uh, starting from the full data data set and uh, iteratively uh, saving uh, parts of that data set as CSV files in uh, my cloud bucket. And when I do that and I come back to my uh, streaming, here I can see that uh, we are logging indeed uh, several thousands of records per second. And as you can see, my data set here, which was empty, if I refresh that, uh, you will be able to see that uh, data is coming. We already have eight files and 1.3 megabytes of data. And that's the end of my demo. So that was uh, the data engineer process. And now we have our clean event logs that are available to the entire company. And next, our data analyst is going to take that data, uh, do some data exploration uh, using the Databricks notebooks. And once um, she found out uh, the right metrics to um, provide to stakeholders, create a job that would productionalize those metrics uh, and um, productionalize the data set and uh, eventually create a dashboard uh, to share with uh, stakeholders uh, using SQL analytics. And this is the next notebook, the data analyst. Um, so three uh, simple parts. The first, uh, we look at the table um, and this is the same table that you saw earlier. So the next part is to get some um, statistics to better understand the data that we have here. So um, uh, a little bit long SQL query, but a simple results. The start date is October 1st. Uh, and date is November 30th. So we have two months of e-commerce data, 68 million events, 64 million views, and a couple millions of cart and purchases. Uh, you can see we have a lot of products, but uh, only 129 categories. So um, I feel uh, as a data analyst that this uh, is kind of a human um, processable amount of categories. So we're going to start exploring the sales per category. And uh, this is the purpose of that third cell where we look at the sales, uh, yeah, the sales per category. And here you can see that the top category is the smartphone with sales of around $335 million uh, in the last two months. So now we've defined what uh, our important uh, metrics. Um, uh, this is the, the sales per uh, category. And we would like to provide to our users uh, the ability to uh, to, uh, to use sales uh, per category per day. Um, so that's the next step where our data analyst can share um, the, not uh, uh, to, to share the uh, data, uh, processed data set, processed aggregated at the, the business level um, so that users don't need to look at the raw events. And uh, she can do that in a very simple manner. So here's the, the query that provides the sales per category per day. And the only thing to add to, um, to create uh, that table and provide it to, uh, to her stakeholders is this line, create or replace table, e-commerce demo dot category insights. Uh, and, um, uh, and now the next step is to schedule a job to run this notebook uh, on a, a regular basis. So here, what I did is to schedule it every day. So here, you can see uh, there is a job called gold tables job. If I go to um, to this job, you can see that there are there have been a couple of runs uh, before, a couple of manual runs, and the last two have been scheduled automatically. And uh, the schedule is uh, 12 a.m. And the job lasts uh, only a few minutes. So now our data analyst has uh, um, productionalized this data set that will be available to everyone in the company and refreshed every day. The next step that you can do as a data analyst is to create a dashboard. So now you share visualization to your company. And for that, uh, we use a Databricks component called the SQL Analytics, which enables you to create dashboards and queries. So here I created a dashboard to show uh, two visualizations. The first one is the total sales by category. So here, for example, if I search bicycle, I can see that there were 362 K of sales. And also the second part 
shows you uh, the sales over time and I can select whichever category I would like to show and that's very convenient. That means that the user of that dashboard can uh, select um, can, and can look at all the categories that they are interested in. Um, and it was very simple to code. So that is a dashboard. Uh, next, I'll show the two queries that have been uh, coded in order to generate those uh, visualizations. And it's basically two SQL queries that you uh, that you uh, um, that you run. This one to uh, for the sales per, per category, and the next one uh, for uh, the sales over time. And uh, please note this little thing called uh, the parameter that enables uh, the user to parameterize uh, parameterize a query and parameterize uh, to to parameterize the um, the, the, the things that are visualized uh, in, uh, in this chart. So now that our data analyst has built great uh, insights, the next step is for our data scientist to again start from the, from the, the logs, do some exploration with the notebooks with uh, uh, feature engineering and machine learning, productionalize the feature table with a job, and eventually create an MLflow experiment to productionize the model. And here, we're going to try to solve one problem, which is find the user that are most likely to buy headphones. So uh, I have shown that notebook before for the data analyst, but there is the second cell here for the data scientist, where the data scientist creates the feature table, starting from the events data set and aggregating it at the user level. Uh, and as you can see, it's very few lines. And the result of it is a table aggregated at the user uh, ID level, where you can see um, whatever this the user has done on the platform. Those are just Boolean fields that tell, tell us whether the uh, user has put the, a bag in a cart. Here you can see this user viewed a bag. If you go a little bit further, you can see they also view, view a costume and view a dress. So it paints the picture of a user that is interested in clothes. And uh, so that's the data set that our data scientist is going to use to uh, build predictions. Uh, let's uh, deep, dig into that uh, data scientist notebook. I will not explain too much the code, really uh, explain just the, um, uh, ah, the process. So we start from the top 10 categories and we pick one, so the headphone, and we want to predict whether a user is a potential headphone buyer based on his or her actions in the other categories. Uh, so uh, there are a couple of steps. The first is the data preparation. Um, here, I want to highlight one line of code to convert uh, a Delta format to Pandas. And then we're ready to do some modeling. Uh, so here, uh, again, modeling uh, headphone purchase as a function of activity with the other features. We use a log logistic regression. If we use a random guess, the score is 0.5. It makes sense. Uh, we have a balanced data set. But uh, when using all the features, our model score is 0.684. So we gained a lot of knowledge uh, on the likelihood of users to buy headphones. Now, there's something I don't, do not really like about this model. It's We use 27 features. I like to it to make it simpler for productionalization. So we will use here a technology called recursive feature elimination. We start from the 27 features and iteratively eliminate the least important feature. Because this, will, this process will generate around 27 uh, models, we want to use the technology called MLflow tracking to track uh, those models and the, their performance at each iteration. Uh, so for that, we, we create an experiment with MLflow. Uh, second step for each run, uh, we uh, for, for each uh, model, we um, create a MLflow run uh, that we can give it a name. And for each run, we log the score, we log the model, and we log metadata that are the coefficient and the importance. Um, then we have uh, a piece of UI here uh, that we can access to uh, access the experiment. So if I click here, I can access the next um, notebook, the, 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 this, this UI that shows me the summary of, your, uh, of my experiment. Here, my experiment is called the headphone purchase prediction. And uh, you can see in my experiment, I have a lot of runs. It started with all the features, and then we remove one feature at a time. 
And what, uh, what's interesting is that um, at first, you do not see any change in the, the score of the modeling. And then after some time, you see a slight decrease of the score. And finally, you know, one before the last, uh, you can see that the score is still very, um, very good, very close to 0684. So let's choose that model to uh, understand it a little bit deeper. deeper. Um, this leads us to uh, another UI, which is the, the UI that shows the summary of information about each model. And um, here we have first this information about the feature importance. So we see the two features used here are clocks view, which uh, I think clocks is probably a smartwatch and a smartphone purchase. And it makes sense that a headphone purchase could be uh, linked with smartwatch and smartphone. Um, uh, please note also we have uh, every run uh, has a unique ID which enables uh, their bricks to store that so that it's accessible uh, in the future by any person in your company. Uh, if I come back to the data census notebook, then I can retrieve that run, retrieve the model and uh, run my final prediction. And here's my final prediction. A user who viewed a smartwatch and purchased a smartphone has 92% probability to be a headphone buyer. And that's extremely powerful. You can imagine this kind of prediction scaled across thousands of products for uh, Amazon can generate billions of dollars in uh, additional revenue. So in this demo, I focused on the breadth of the data processes that you can cover with Databricks. And let me give you a brief recap of the highlights. First, you saw code that is saved in GitHub that you can version control and share uh, with everyone in your company. You saw data engineering SLA of a few seconds uh, that saves several gigabytes of data per day and that you could scale to terabytes potentially. You saw a data engineer and the data analyst that have been able to productionalize their uh, data sets, their metrics and their uh, features with a SLA of one day, but that could be reduced to a, down to a couple of minutes. You, you saw a dashboard that's available for the entire company to monitor how the categories uh, of products are doing, are selling. And you saw a model that's available to uh, the company in the UI and machine learning engineers can pick it up at any time to uh, productionalize. Uh, as uh, a result, um, I hope to convey the, the idea that uh, you can really do more with data and simpler with Databricks. Thank you.